Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf for another Top 5 Wednesday. Well, another. I'm not doing Top 5 Wednesday that often. It's a Goodreads group uh, run by Samantha from Thoughts on Tomes. Um, I love her channel. Uh, and the Goodreads group is on Wednesday. She picks a topic and then you have to ch uh, choose five books, your top five for that topic. I don't do the top five Wednesday that often because the topics um, and the books are heavily uh, YA and fantasy centered. So a lot of times I, I just can't do anything with it. But this week it's about villains, uh, our top five favorite villains. And I thought this is a topic that I can actually really talk about um, and present you with five books with villains that I think are good, quote unquote. And I don't mean villains we like necessarily, but it could also mean villains that I thought or I think are really well drawn and really well developed. And if we're talking about villains, you're probably not surprised that the first book I picked is a book by Lionel Shriver because she can write a good villain like nobody else. Uh, and for this top five, I picked one of her less famous books, I think, and that's The New Republic, first published in 2012, but written in 1998. And I mentioned that because it's a book about terrorism. Um, so it was written way before 9-11, Anyway, the main character is Edgar Kellogg. Uh, the book is set in the, the late 1990s um, in New York first. He's a corporate lawyer, but he switches careers and becomes a journalist. Uh, his goal in life is to become not rich, but famous, admired. That's what he wants. Um, and when he gets the assignment uh, from, his, from his paper to investigate and report about homegrown terrorism in a fictitious peninsula in Portugal called Barba, he takes up the challenge. So you have to imagine Portugal and then um, Lionel Shriver just invented on the southern tip of Portugal, she just added a peninsula which she called Barba. Um, so it's a fictitious land. Um, they have homegrown terrorism here, there, and Edgar Kellogg has to investigate. He also has to investigate uh, the disappearance of the former correspondent of that newspaper, somebody who is famous and admired, somebody who Edgar Kellogg would want to be. And then you have hilarious twists and turns and the unholy alliance between journalism and terrorism and what's true and what's not. Um, and I, I thought it, it was fantastic. I mean, who would dare to make fun of terrorism except for Lionel Shriver? And Edgar Kellogg is not um, maybe a, a, a villain in the sense that he is all bad. I mean, he's not a good guy and he he's looking for his advantage and he, he is not good, but he's not entirely bad either. And that, in my opinion, makes him a good villain and certainly as a central character of a book. So if you are into uh, a story and if you don't mind that Lionel Shriver makes fun of terrorism um, uh, with twists and turns about journalism and how to report the truth or whether you influence the truth uh, influence events. I thought it was hilarious. So a good villain, Edgar Kellogg, The New Republic. The second pick for Top 5 Wednesday is Idaho, the debut novel by Emily Ruskovich, published, published in 2016. Now you might be familiar with this book because that the book was discussed on Booktube and elsewhere a lot uh, after the publication two years ago. But for those of you who don't know, um, the story centers about Wade and Anne in the rural Idaho, really in the mountains, um, and Anne is, the, is Wade's second wife, um, and they try, you know, to carve out a life, but Wade is uh, a difficult character, um, a little bit villainous, but it's not the villain I want to talk about. Um, uh, he has, uh, he suffers from dementia, and one of the uh, side effects, as if you want to call it, is he gets aggressive. But uh, the central story is about uh, Wade's first wife, Jenny, who eight years before the novel opens with Anne and Wade, uh, so eight years before uh, Jenny um, uh, killed uh, one of their daughters and the other one went missing. So Jenny is, if you want, the central villain of the book. Uh, we get 
her perspective as well in the course of the book because the book is told from various perspectives and Wade's, Jenny's and other characters. Uh, but Jenny is the central bad guy, quote unquote, uh, because the the events that took place on that hot August, uh, eight years before the book opens, is the central event from which all of the book develops. And I uh, thought Jenny was a good villain because she is a complex character. And even though uh, her uh, actions are central to the book, um, uh, Emily Ruskowicz didn't give us easy answers as to why Jenny did it. Um, uh, on the contrary, it, it's never really clear why Jenny did what she did. And I thought that was really good because often when you, even though, even if you have a, a good villain or a villainous character who does something in, in the story, um, the author then goes to quite some length to explain us why the villain did what he did to make it, you know, understandable. And what I really like about this book is that Emily Vaskovich doesn't. She leaves us with this feeling that there is no explanation. And I, I thought that was really good. I mean, I didn't read the book just for the for the villain character, but I really liked the story. But I thought this uh, idea of how you uh, uh, structure a, a villain or a villainous character was really good. This book uh, with a good villain is also a debut novel, uh, which didn't get the attention that I thought it deserved, even though it was long listed for the Man Booker two years ago, and that is uh, Work Like Any Other by Virginia Reeves. The book is set, I have to move a little bit because the book is so big, uh, the book is set in the 1920s in Alabama, also a rural setting, a farm, and uh, the the main one of the main characters, uh, Roscoe, his first name is Roscoe Martin. Yeah, Roscoe is his first name. Um, he tries to make ends meet uh, by uh, stealing uh, electricity, and then something happens, and he's uh, sent to jail. And the story develops from there. So it's not uh, Roscoe is not a bad guy, but he does a bad thing or something he does has horrible consequences. And his wife and he himself, who's sent to prison, they have to deal with it. So uh, the book then follows uh, the, the life of the wife after uh, Roscoe is sent to prison, but it also follows him in prison and what happens, you know, after the, uh, the incident and his life in prison and uh, once he is released. I thought... Uh, this was a, a very atmospheric book about uh, a couple in rural Alabama, but I especially liked um, Roscoe as a main character, as, a, yeah, like I said, a good guy doing a bad thing, and his uh, development from there, uh, how he copes with it, how he lives after that, but also how people around him, have to cope with what he did and the consequences of his deeds and how they deal with it. Uh, so I, I really liked the book, like I said, and I thought I, I mentioned it here, first of all, because it fits uh, the top five, but also because I uh, think this book should be read by many more people um, than read it than uh, people who read it so far. I'm, I'm, the sentence didn't make sense, but you, you know what I mean. Number four in the top five good villains is a book that I've talked about on this channel a lot. It's a science fiction book and one of my favorite sci-fi novels, and that is The Sparrow uh, by Mary Doria Russell, published in 1996. Um, this, the book is set in 2059, or at least when it opens, um, it's 2059, and we meet our main character, Emilio. He's a Jesuit priest who just came back from a, a mission, um, a long mission to a di distant planet called Rakat, um, um, where he encountered, he and his crew uh, encountered uh, the people who live there. Um, when Emilio comes back, he has horrible injuries, and it's quite clear really soon that these injuries were inflicted 
by the people uh, who originally live on this planet. And then we get in, in back flashes, we get um, uh, the story of the mission, uh, Emilio and his uh, fellow astronauts uh, uh, who go there, who are interested in, you know, finding the... Uh, the, the population there, interacting with them, and what kind of consequences this has. So the villains in the book are the people living on Rakat, because I don't want to spoil anything, but they do unspeakable things to the people coming from Earth. But uh, it's also clear that some of the things that they do, although for the for 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 the human beings it's horrible they are not meant to be um a criminal acts so it's a, a a book in the center it's really a book about the misunderstandings and the horrible consequences it is consequences it has if you encounter a culture or a population or a civilization that you have no idea how it works and what kind of um, consequences then your action actions have. Um, I I I love this book. I the 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 way uh, Russell um, tells us the story of these uh, these astronauts, these investigators who come with the best best. They have the best purpose. You know, they don't want to be. The bad guys and the other party doesn't want to be bad guys either but in the end uh, most of them are in a, in a sense and I, I thought this nuanced approach uh, to what it means to do bad things to other human beings or other beings in general I thought it was brilliant the story is brilliant it's to told in a really engaging uh, uh, prose it it's uh it's fast paced in a way uh because you want to find out what happens and how the the people especially emilio how they got hurt the way they did um but the the suspense is one layer and underneath is this really serious theme of uh, the clash of two civilizations so i can if you want to have books with really good villains in a sci-fi setting, I can highly, highly recommend, which I did a hundred times before, but I will do it again. I can highly recommend The Sparrow by Mary Doriel Russell. And the last pick has a sort of a, a similar theme as The Sparrow, but is set um, here on Earth, and that is Hanya Yanagi Yanagihara's book, People in the Tree. People in the Trees, uh, published in 2013. And if I remember correctly, this was her debut. Now, you might know if you're following me on Goodreads uh, or other social media that I did not like uh, A Little Life, her, you know, best-selling book. But I loved her bo the book before this one. Uh, the book follows our main character, Norton Perina, who uh, is an, a, a scientist, an anthropologist, who in the 1950s goes on an expedition into a fictitious micro Micronesian island where you have a special tribe of people who, um, because of some turtle thing, um, they live extremely long lives, and he investigates that. That's basically the setting. Uh, so we, uh, the book opens when Norton Perinia is arrested uh, for child abuse and child molestation, and then we get his life story told as a memoir. The book is based on a, a real-life character, a scientist, an anthropologist who was uh, convicted, uh, arrested, and tried and convicted of, of child abuse. Um, but it's not... Um, uh, in the sense a fictitious tale of that character. That is just the premise. Um, and we follow Norton then in his memoir to this uh, Micronesian island and he encounters those people and the tribes and the people who live in, in, in the trees and who have this, um, uh, this medicine who makes them live very long. And Norton is an objectable character. I mean, he is really 
unbelievably bad, horrible person. And the the fantastic thing about this book is because it's his memoir, you still want to read it, even though he is despicable and does horrible things, um, child abuse and sexual abuse being one of them, which is not a spoiler because you, you hear that right up front. Uh, he denies those charges and then he tells you what in his view really happened. And the way uh, Yana Gehara does that, that Norton tries to tell you um, how good he is and what fantastic things he does, and you as the reader think, you are just horrible. So that is really fantastically done. The story is also really good about this um, expedition, like in The Sparrow, to, you know, um, to uh, where they uncover a, a, a remote tribe, uh, the people there, how it's described. But I think, for me, Norton is one of the best villains that I've ever seen in fiction. So those were my top five books for villains for Top 5 Wednesday. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I'm looking forward to talking to you down in the comments about the books I mentioned or any other books. Maybe you have books with uh, exceptionally good villains you wanted to uh, tell me about, and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye-bye!